Okay, hi everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, before I introduce Darla, I just wanted to tell you a little bit more about how this project came to be. In fall 2019, Darla applied for a grant that she received through Oxy Arts, um, where she began to create this documentary. And uh, as you know, we went remote in March and things were kind of on pause, but we're so grateful that Darla was able to finish this documentary over the summer. And we're so grateful to everyone who participated and so excited that you're all here and we get to watch, uh, watch this together. So with that, I'll pass it along to Darla, who will tell you a little more about the film and we'll get started from there. Hi, everybody. Thank you so, so much for joining. It really means a lot to me that um, you could all come out um, and see the screening. I know some of you have probably already seen the documentary since I have posted it on YouTube, um, but I just want to give a huge shout out to um, everyone that has helped me in the creation of this documentary, um, TNA Nickens and um, Tati. Honestly, huge, huge um, resources and great friends of mine, and um, I would not have been able to finish the documentary um, without them. Um, just, I also, also at the end of the documentary, there's gonna be a Q and A session. Um, so if you see on the bottom of your screen, um, there's a little section that says Q and A. If you have any questions that you would like to ask at the end of the documentary, there will be times so you could type those questions in that box. Um, also, I just wanted to thank everyone who donated to the Black Arts Fund, which was a fund that I created after making this documentary, um, how we could maybe encourage more Black students to create art on campus. Um, and so I'm really happy that people donated to that fund. We, we reached our goal. So it's really, really great. And I wanna thank you all for that. Um, so we could go ahead and get started in watching the documentary. Um, I think, yeah. I think we're we could we're good to go and watch. Like when we walk down the halls and stuff, like we see each other on the quad, we say hi and like there's some sense of like, okay, we're having similar experiences. I I don't really feel like there's any moment where I'm not fighting for my spot here. BSA. This is the Black Student Association. Well, I think a BSA, a good BSA, would be one that can create that sense of community for people of color, for Black people. My name is Leandria Bell. Uh, my name is Javion Tinsley. My name is Ronnie. I'm Satya. I'm a first year. And I just started my junior year. I'm a sophomore and I'm pre-med. I'm a senior and I'm a Mac major. I am a politics major. I'm a junior. Somebody get me down from this pedestal where I don't belong. Feel like I'm acting on a stage where I've been trained to perform. Fake smiles for school magazines. A minstrel show for diversity quotas. Feel like this college really don't want us unless we smile and thriving. I'm just trying to get by. Somebody take me off this pedestal because it's too damn high. People, you know, kind of come to the school for like, oh, Obama went there, you know, like it's black. That's really black school. And it's just, it's not. Yeah, I think that like Oxy likes to say that they're super diverse. Um, but when you look at the numbers of black students specifically, it's really lacking. I think that at Oxy, the racial diversity is something that they need to work on. Like, I, I need people who are brown like me, <laughs> with hair like me, you know, so. And also I think like diversity for Oxy is very relative. Like it's a diverse, it's one of the most diverse small liberal arts colleges. That's, mm -hmm. that's a separate category. I understand that the ratio is not what it should be, but this is more black people than I've seen in four years in high school, for sure. Uh, actually, I've grown up with nothing but black people. Um, that's fine. Here at Oxy, it's, it's definitely more diverse. Um, it's more white people. But it's not good. <laughs> it's really, really not good because, like I said, I feel like I know every single black student on this campus. 
What's the point in crying when nobody wants to hear you cry? Lately, I've been feeling the burn of flame etchings on my newborn skin. I was born brown, but was burned black. My heart mourns for the melanin, for the charcoal skin, for our skin and our hearts shredded, self-sacrificing. What's the point in crying when nobody wants to hear you cry? I feel like it's definitely difficult to go to a predominantly white institution if you're not used to um, that type of environment. Um, it makes it even more complicated because this is like higher education, so why are you out here trying to earn a degree, um, you put into something that's really unnatural and you forced to try to adapt to it, I mean, and it's adapt to die, really. I, I don't really feel like there's any moment where I'm not fighting for my spot here, even though I've gotten here and I'm paying for myself to be here. If it's not financial issues where an office decides that they have hella problems with your file, if it's not a professor needing you to explain things to the class, if it's not your friends taking how you speak and using it, if it's not, you know, I think there's so many, you could go from the institutional level to just like the academic level in class to the social level and everything is a fight. If you're in a place that wasn't made for you to begin with, I feel like origin like very much does matter in the way that like things play out. I feel like it wasn't made for us, so like, how am I supposed to feel like it is? It wasn't really made for you, so how could it ever really help or accommodate or understand or empathize with you? It's like, it's actually impossible. I don't know, it's, it's, there's always like a sense of I'm not supposed to be here on this campus, which is kind of a, it, it, it can be a good thing in the sense like, okay, um, I made it this far. I'm gonna keep going on this path, but there should be more people that look like me here. Uh, so for the first semester, I really, really, really felt like I didn't belong, and I didn't live in Poly my first semester. I lived in Chilcot, and uh, any dorm that isn't Poly is super white, so it was damn near impossible for me to ever connect to anybody. I was like, I called my mom and I'm like, yeah, mine ain't no black people on campus. I was like, it ain't nobody from Chicago. I'm like, I'm phoning him, I'm about to leave this bitch. Like, I'm about to transfer and go somewhere else. And then I met Lexi. So I was very overwhelmed. Like, I wanted to transfer immediately. I was like, I'm not staying here. It's like 10 black people on this campus and I know all of them. And then like one carnival night, Lexi came up to me and she was like, excuse me, are you from Chicago? I said, yes, I'm from the South Side. And she's like, oh my God. And we had like this loud ass, ratchet ass screaming match. But then I found someone else from Chicago. So <laughs> I was like, okay, this might work, you know? And so it's like, I don't know now, I feel like just having like that one person who can like closely connect with me makes me feel like, oh yeah, like, the fuck? I made my space here, even if I don't belong. Honestly, I love black women so much, so much. I'm about to get dumb passionate because I honestly think that like no one feels me on this campus like black women do. And like taking it, getting our hair done, talking, like hearing our laughter like at random places in campus mm -hmm. and then like walking towards it and just like <laughs> knowing even if my day was shitty, like when I interact with y'all, like it's not going to be. With my black friends, I feel like we're very close. Like those are my sisters at the end of the day. Like those are the people that make me feel like I can be my most authentic self. Like they are my friends and I can like talk about culturally relevant stuff with them, social issues with them. Like those are the people that see me for just my raw self, you know? I was thinking about this the other day. Um, it was interesting, my parents came I'm adopted by white parents and my parents came last semester and they were on campus and they got to meet some of my friends and um, they were like, all your friends are black, like all of them. They're like, do you talk to white people? <laughs> and I, was, I was like, oh, um, I was like, yeah, like, you know, in class, like here and there, you know? <laughs> I feel like my entire friend group is black women. Um, you know, I, I spend the majority of my time around black people. That's where I feel most comfortable. So I definitely feel connected, without a doubt. Most of my friends are black. Almost all my friends are black. Um, I think we just go through the same thing here. So it's easier for us to just connect and see each other and just already know what's up, kind of.
I only feel black in non-black spaces. Reduced to my pigment, I'm nameless. I'm trying to figure out the harm in being reduced to greatness. I am black, it's true, and I claim it. I am a slave to this pigment, but I claim it. It would be normal for like my professor to mix you up with like the other black girl that's in the room sometimes. It's just like, really? Like, for real? There are only like two, three of us in here. Is it that hard? Being the only black person that was different, you know what I'm saying? And um, being as though like, uh, on the topic of the conversation of class, I feel like then it's, it's American presidency. I'm a politics major, so like, I feel like I got something to contribute to the conversation or else I'm only gonna get one side of response, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm not one to sit down and just hit that. If you're the only black person in the classroom and the topic is about African-Americans or their history and stuff, then it's like everyone looks at you in order to be that spokesperson for all black people. And then like, if you don't wanna like live up to that expectation and whatnot, then it's like some white savior who gonna speak about your people and they don't even know what the fuck they talking about, so. I just had never really had experience like having to go to class and like only have <clears throat> like white perspectives in a classroom. I was like, oh. When I'm the one black student in the class and we're talking about something heavy and it's like, okay, I'll bring it up and I'll either be dismissed or there won't be conversation about it because the other students can't connect and that's always strange, or I'll get weird looks if we're talking about something sensitive, some sensitive topic related to race. And I feel like here I take a lot of black classes, so I hear a lot about like the trauma that black folks go through and the oppression that black folks go through. I've put myself in classes that are like specifically about the black experience, which is rewarding in that like I'm learning about my history and my people, but it's also overwhelming because I'm constantly like thinking about all of these elements that like affect um, just like my being in this place. Even though class is over, I still got to return to my blackness and still survive. So I don't want to, I want to get back to the way I think and function in my blackness outside of the way in which it's taught. And like often after like a day of like classes like that, I'll come out to the quad and just be like, oh my God, like. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, and those days are like probably the most overwhelming because I just am like, like, I'm just here in this space knowing these things, but like not really being able to like change it. My school is personal because I'm learning about people that look like me. I'm learning about my people. So at times I'm like, damn. But then at the same time, I'm like, I'm doing this work because I know our stories deserve to get hurt. And I'm not trying to prove, oh, our struggle so much harder because I've learned that that's not a narrative that I want. I don't want to prove that I'm the most oppressed person on the planet. That's not what I'm trying to do. It's just that I'm trying to get people to realize, like, we do have to recognize that our oppression is, like, it's deep, like, really deep. And something needs to be done about that. Like, I don't have the answers. I'm only 20, but, like, you know, I would love to work towards something like that. I seek refuge in the laughter of my people. Black smiles beam in the day's warmth, painting an effortless portrait. I gravitate towards this proliferation of color, how we demand to be seen. Our collective joy is a stark contrast to the days we spend alone. We are droplets of constructed diversity, but we beam on forever blessed by the sun. Uh, BSA at Oxy, it's, it's, it's wishy-washy. I haven't really participated in BSA that much. I know that they, I mean, it's obviously like an affinity group club uh, for the black students on campus. Uh, I'm a president of BSA. Uh, I know a lot about BSA, not everything, which is why I'm still trying to do better. We don't really have like frequent BSA meetings. So like, it's not like I could get to know them through that like angle. Um, also like upperclassmen, I had, like have a hard time just like approaching just because I am a first year um, and it's like kind of intimidating. The mentorship between like the freshmen and the seniors, if that was like more structured, I feel like that could be really robust. BSA hasn't been as organized as they could be. 
and sometimes I do feel as though there's a lack of programming in terms of like events that they throw but when they do throw events I feel like they go all in and they do a really good job. The ability to kind of communicate with each other um, sometimes can get really hard and especially when there's just so many things that are put on the black students um, that we're having to deal with and just like they put the responsibility on us to um, you know handle a situation that maybe we don't even know how because we don't even have the faculty or anybody to really back us until we really ask. I think there's a lot of drama and a lot of um, lack of organization, but I think that stems from a larger issue with like administration and there not being a lot of support for black students because we got to deal with being black at Oxy, already being a marginalized group, and then having to take control of an entire club. We're honestly doing a lot of work of what the school should be hiring folks to do, like planning for black programs and stuff, and I feel like it's, I feel like it's a lot at times, but it's all worth it because I know it's going to benefit, you know, the black students. BSA, I think, just needs more, like, support from the, from Oxy, like, administration and faculty like we do not have any type of support and then they look at us weird when like when we're not doing enough organizing or like you know support to me looks like money a lot of the times and because I feel like sometimes you just don't got it you know and sometimes you don't want to explain hey I'm broke 50 times sometimes you just I don't got it so can you help period point blank I'm gonna use and milk and just like, I'm going to use Oxy for all I can, you know what I'm saying, to break that that curse. And I feel like they do give black students that opportunity. But it just, it just sucks that we always got to try 10 times harder than the average student. Where's my crown? Where's my crown? Okay, thank you for uh, watching the documentary. We were seeing some nice comments. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'm sorry if the quality was a a little weird while watching. It might just be because um, we were live streaming at the same time, but hopefully it didn't buffer too much. Um, so for the Q&A portion of this documentary, I see that Sarah Cook has answered a question. So I'll go ahead and answer that right now. Um, okay, so Sarah Cook, thank you for asking this question. You say, you talk about this pedestal, which is super interesting. Do you feel that the tokenization of Black students at Oxy undermines its ability to actually create productive environments that provide necessary support? Wow, thank you. That is a really, really good question. Um, before I answer this, I just want to stress that obviously I did sit down and interview, you know, 25 Black students at Oxy, but there's in no way the, the experiences of the students that I talked to represent all Black students at Oxy or all black students at higher education. Um, the goal for this project is to see the ways in which, you know, our individual stories kind of speak together to tell a collective story. Um, so to answer this question, I want to be talking from my own personal experience. Um, and, you know, if other black students agree or disagree, that's sort of up to them. Um, but this idea of the pedestal and the poem that I wrote, um, Sometimes I, I do do feel that sense of tokenization that if you're not performing at the highest level that you can, if you're not participating in um, every single activity, if you're not a part of every single club, then it's almost as if you don't have a purpose at the school. And so um, I think at times it does undermine our um, Oxy's ability to create a productive environment because if you're expected to excel and exceed and at this high, you know, level all the time, 
it's it can be really stressful and overwhelming for students. And it's almost like you have to continuously prove that you're worthy of being at a school. And that's something that I've struggled with in high school, middle school, and now in college. But like I said before, that's just my own experience. And I'm sure if you ask that to, you know, different black students, they will have their own opinion. But thank you, Sarah. That is a really good question. Um, okay. Let's see. I think I see some questions in the chat box. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and answer them, but also feel free to use the Q&A section too on the side. Um, so Frankie said, can you share a little bit about your process? How much did the film change as you were making it? And how did these conversations shift your own perspective? Thank you, Frankie. That's also a really good um, question. So originally when I um, started to do this project, I had so many different ideas that I wanted to do. I like wanted to, I, I wrote like three different songs that I wanted to include. And I wanted the poetry not to just be voiceovers, but actual footage of me reciting the poetry. And I wanted to incorporate art and music and dance. But unfortunately, um, we were sent home due to the pandemic in the middle of filming. So I didn't really get to um, film all of the things that I wanted to. And I also felt, you know, really stuck. I felt in the, in the process, I didn't have a storyline. How am I supposed to talk about being black at Oxy? What does that even mean? What does blackness even mean? And like, what am I trying to say? Um, so I think the interruption of filming because of COVID was definitely difficult and definitely affected the process. But like I mentioned before, like TNA and Tati, the, our editor and um, film, like TNA, she did the film and Tati edited it. I mean, they were really helpful in, you know, making sure that my ideas were clear and we just broke down the interviews by specific themes. And then that was the way that I approached it. So thank you, Frankie. Um, so we have another question from Ms. Queenie Johnson. Who are the administrators that actively support black students on campus? So I think this also depends on who you talk to and who you ask. Um, there are different, I guess, offices on campus that are, you know, the, the intention is that, you know, these offices are supposed to help not only black students, but um, people of color. And you tend to see that in like the ICC, the Intercultural Community Center, correct me if I'm wrong. There's so many acronyms at Oxy, but I believe that that's what it stands for. Um, but I think, you know, that office or that department is, you know, designed to help students of color. But I think at times it often falls on, like, you know, students mentioned in the documentary, on Black students to um, create and start events on our own, which can kind of um, be difficult. Thank you for that question. Um, okay, I see another question in the Q&A section. So I'm going to answer it live. Robin Craggs. So more on the pedestal. One of the things we in international programs have appreciated so much about you, Darla, and many folks in the video is your willingness to share your experiences with others in the intention of inspiring other Black students to, oh, oh my goodness, this is not a question, but thank you, Robin. <laughs> Follow your leadership and global engagement. I'm so sorry if we ever made you feel like you were on a pedestal. Um, I don't know if that's ever like an intentional thing that happens, but I think that just tends to happen when you have um, not that many Black students at these, you know, types of schools. But Robin, always have a love for IPO in your office. Um, shout out to IPO, the International Programs Office, have always made me feel and other Black students feel connected at Oxy. Um, okay. Yeah, okay, I'm seeing lots of different questions. So uh, let's see. Um, I'm also wondering if now, if you think having a black president will change things or does there need to be more structural change? Does it feel like it's a step in the right direction or does it feel like performative action? Ooh, Sarah Cook, that is also a very good question. Um, a little spicy question, um, but I like it because I think that, you know, that's a valid question that a lot of black students, if I'm being honest, have talked about, you know, in the privacy of our dorm rooms. We're like, why is it that, you know, what is Oxy trying to say by 
by hiring or having a black president? Is it just, you know, so that we can fill this diversity quota to show that, you know, we support black students, look at our president. I hope that that is not the case. Um, I graduated, um, so I don't know how much I will, you know, see any sort of action taking place, but I will say that the president has reached out to me in regards to the Black Arts Fund that I that I sort of created and making that a more structural, um, long lasting program at Oxy. But I don't know. Sometimes I think in higher education, there is always going to be that performative action nature. And I don't know if um, you can even avoid that. But that's a good question, Sarah. <laughs> um, so let's see. Isaiah Thomas. What does authentic support look like for Black students? What would Oxy look and feel like if support was there? Oh man, that's a really, really great question. And I wish that while making this documentary, I could have included everything that students have said, but obviously I had to keep it to a certain time limit. Um, and I wanted to complete the documentary in time. But that was a question that we, we did pose to students. And I remember Ronnie, uh, the president of VSA, love her sister, um, she was saying like, we should really start focusing on the mental health of black students at Oxy. Um, it's very difficult to feel isolated and overwhelmed. And when we have classes that are about um, like mass incarceration or, you know, the hyper criminalization of black people, and then you have to learn all of these things in the classroom and then step outside of that, it is very overwhelming. And, um, you know, it, it can take a toll on your mental health. And I feel like there needs to be some sort of, um, I know we have Irma, correct me if I'm wrong, she, she works in Emmons and you know, provides therapy for students. But Ronnie suggested maybe even having like a spa day for black students where we could just sit out and talk and it's free, free of charge or you know, having multiple black counselors that we can talk to. Um, but I, I really like this idea of focusing on blackness and mental health. I think that would, that's something that I think Oxy should definitely um, look into. So thank you, Isaiah. It's a good question. Um, okay. In one of your poems, you use the phrase reduced to greatness. Can you share a bit about what that means to you and your experience at Oxy? Um, yeah, so I wrote this poem a, a while ago. Um, you know, I say something like, I only feel black in non black spaces. Um, I'm trying to figure out the harm in being reduced to greatness. I am black and it's true when I claim it. And I guess what I'm trying to say with that line of the poem is there's more to me than just my skin color in the same way that there's more to everybody. We are more than just our pigments. We are more than just the color of our skin. And I think sometimes we get reduced to just our skin. And it's this, um, I guess it's something that I have to struggle with internally because well, well, what does it mean to just to be reduced to being black? Black is beautiful, black is amazing, black is great. So why am I struggling so much with, you know, being reduced to that idea? And I guess it's just, I don't want to be put into a box. I want to be celebrated for all that I am, not just simply my blackness, but it can't just simply be blackness because blackness is beautiful. So it's just a contradiction that I, I have felt. Thank you. Um, okay, so there's some more questions in the chat box. Um, um, sorry, I'm reading it right now. Okay, so Hadik, hey girl. Looking back at the video now, are there other things you wish you had asked interviewees? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm proud of the documentary, I really am, but I've never really sort of directed or made a film by myself before. And I feel like it, it kind of lacks a little bit of structure or storyline. Um, I wish it had a more specific theme. Um, after I finished the documentary, I wish that I could have found a way to weave together the importance of having um, Black students to engage in art and how that affects our mental health. I think that um, as I was talking to people and getting to know people in the interviews, it seemed like that was a really um, important theme that continuously came up but I was receiving so much information during the interviews that I could only, um, I, I couldn't dive as deep into some certain topics as I wanted to. But thank you, Hadik, that's a good question. 
Um, okay. Do you feel like, do you feel a project like this can be a space for healing for Black students? Hi, Ella. Um, I mean, I hope so. I hope so. Uh, my intention for this project was to just give voice to a lot of the things that Black students experience. Um, I've been going through this since I was in high school and now in college. And sometimes it could just be like a, a release to just even talk about what you're experiencing, to have somebody sit down next to you and affirm what you're going through. You know, like in some of those interviews, people would say things, and I'd be like, I feel the exact same way. Or they would bring up things that I'd never even considered or was unrelated to my own life. Um, but I think just that act of telling your story can be a source of healing. Thank you, Ella. Um, also, this is random. Okay, I think that is not a question. Okay, I think I've answered all the questions. Um, I'm sorry if I rambled at some points, um, but <laughs> I'm just like collecting my thoughts live. But yeah, I think I've answered everybody's questions. So if there's no more final questions, I want to, oh, actually I see one more question for, from Katrina. So let me answer that really quickly. Um, hi Katrina. There is a theme in the black community of knowing at least loosely who the black artists are within our community. What avenues at Oxy and beyond do you recommend black students who may not have lots of experience with art to do to begin making art? That is a really, really good question. I don't think anyone ever just, well, actually maybe some people do claim themselves as like, I'm an artist and I have, you know, I know exactly what I wanna say. I think that there can be um, lots of different avenues for, for students who maybe don't have a lot of experience with art to, to start. I think one good way would be having like um, writing workshops or like, a, cause I like to do poetry. Um, so like if someone came and didn't open mic night and then sat down with the students and then they all made art together, you know, worked on poems together. Or if um, in a club, you know, in BSA, if, you know, they scheduled a monthly trip to a theater show within the city. And then after that, you know, students reflected on their experience and they maybe they wrote, wrote about it or um, they, they drew paintings about it. And I know that there's sometimes um, Oxy Arts brings in different professors to teach a class at Oxy. And I forget her name. I'll have to check in later, but I could I could message you after Katrina. Um, there was one black professor that Oxy Arts brought in um, and she also connected a lot of the art students with resources um, to make art. But that is, that is a good question. I think maybe you can discuss more with BSA on how um, that, could, that could happen. But I like the idea of a writing workshop because that's what you know I'm interested in. Okay. Um, I think I answered everybody's questions. Oh, also I wanna Alice Walker. Um, she's part of the Black Alumni Organization. Um, she wanted to say that the Black Alumni are available for mentoring. If you want to participate, please email uh, blackalumni.org at oxy.edu. Um, okay, cool. Thank you everybody so, so much for joining today's session. Um, yeah, if you have no more questions, then you know you're free to, to sign out. Thank you for coming. Oh, Oxy Arts newsletter, if um, you want to sign up for that. Hi, everyone. Just wanted to come back on really quickly to say that um, if you'd like to stay tuned for more about the Black Arts Fund, as those applications become available, we'll be sending out more information through our newsletter. And I just dropped the link in the chat so you can sign up if you aren't uh, signed up already. And thank you so much, Darla. That was absolutely wonderful. Thank you.